Hey folks, Jang here from UltimateRC.com with my Aquacraft Revolt 30 fast electric boat. And with this video, I aim to answer a question that a lot of people have been bringing up recently as I've started to get into uh, boat boating stuff and boats have become a little bit more popular on URC. What do you do with a RC boat after you have driven it in salt water? What do you do for maintenance? Uh, very clear, I want to make this. I am not an old salt, <laughs> pun not entirely intended. Uh, when it comes to RC boats, I'm fairly new to them, so I'm just going to be passing along information that I have picked up from the experience of others, combined with a little bit of my own experience, not just with boats, but with uh, dealing with, with uh, salt water issues in general, and just some common sense things that I've, that I've picked up. So these are not going to be the answers is not going to be the only ways, not going to be necessarily the only things that you should do, but this is just going to cover the routine that I go through. The very first thing that's most important is that you should do maintenance on any boat or uh, car or anything that goes into salt water. You should do maintenance on it immediately as soon as you take it out of the water or as, as quickly as possible after you have taken that thing out of salt water before corrosion starts to set in. First thing you want to do is rinse the thing off. Rinse the whole thing off with uh, with fresh water. Uh, hopefully you have a sealed hatch and all that. If you don't, just be careful. You know, Make sure you don't get water into places where it should not be. But you want to get as much of the salt water and salt that's already started to crystallize off the outside of the vehicle uh, or the craft as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, the next thing that's going to be a big, big, big thing is the cooling system. So I just took a, a zip tie, a safety zip tie that I had on my water cooling inlet tube here, took that off so I can pull this off. Uh, as your boat goes through the water, it's picking up water and sending it through the motor and the ESC. And in this case, if you have driven in salt water, it's going to be sending salt water through there. And when you stop driving, you still have heat in your components. So uh, especially right after, if you've been doing a lot of hard running and you don't have a cool down period, it's very, very likely that you will actually evaporate some of the water from inside of especially your motor uh, cooling tube or cooling jacket. Evaporate some of that water and create salt crystals, hard salt crystals in there. So. First thing I want to do, I still got salt water in the system. I'm going to take a, a little cup of water here and I'm going to have to stop talking for a minute because I'm going to fill my mouth up with this and I'm just going to blow water, <laughs> spit basically, uh, clean water into this tube right here and just flush the whole system. You do that a few times and then just stop. Stop with fresh clean water in the system and then just leave it just let it sit there for I don't know 15 minutes half an hour if possible just let it sit there and that's gonna give it some time to start dissolving the salt crystals that have formed inside the system wherever they may be okay so I gave that some time to sit in there I'm gonna again do the same thing uh, rinse that out with a few mouthfuls of uh, clean fresh water at the end of each mouthful uh, try not to put your saliva in there try to make sure you're just pushing clean water through so you'll still have a little bit of water left in your mouth just spit that out now that I've rinsed this out I'm going to again blow through this tube but this time literally blow just air and start getting some of the water out as I do this I'm going to pick up the pick up the boat and uh, angle it different ways to make sure that I'm emptying as much as possible, emptying the water jacket because you notice uh, the, the inlet is going to be down at the bottom. Uh, the outlet is going to be out at the top so it's possible for air to, to go straight through while leaving water underneath. So I'm going to try to go around and evacuate as much of the water as possible while blowing through this by angling it different ways. And then, at this point, the experts usually say, 
put some water dispersant through the system to get some of that water out so it's not going to sit there depending on whoa sorry about that depending upon how long you have the thing sitting around just having uh, water sitting in there long term uh, could cause a little bit of, of oxidation a little bit of extra corrosion so I'm going to use a water dispersant uh, the most common water dispersant water dispersant formula number 40 WD-40 that this is what it is designed to do this is what WD-40 was created for WD stands for water dispersant I'm sticking that tube as far down as possible inside of there uh, the outlet tube from the can I'm going to try to pinch the end it's still going to have some that comes out here and I'm just going to flush this all the way through as best I can all right so I sprayed that through until it was coming out and then kept on going to help uh, flush out some more water now my cooling system should be pretty much set it should be pretty safe for the time being of course if you had any water at all inside of your boat and you want to clean that up you can just use a, a damp sponge and you can kind of rinse off the surfaces uh, generally you want to keep any water from getting in the boat if possible at all uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is also absolutely crucial and that's maintenance on the drive shaft or the uh, flex cable depending upon what type of boat you have you're either going to have a flexible cable or you're going to have a direct uh, hard shaft coming from your motor to your propeller so I want to pull that whole thing out go up to the motor and there will be a collet that will normally take uh, two open wrenches and you just loosen that up it's a counterclockwise on the the one that's closer towards the prop while holding the other you don't need to take the whole thing off the motor shaft you just need to loosen this up and then that will allow you to pull the propeller along with its shaft straight out well it's not as bad as I expected actually I did a good job of greasing this thing up so it didn't get much water in the tube itself so you pull that out depending upon what type of boat you have you may actually have this removable uh, sleeve also uh, brass sleeve yeah this is not looking so bad i'm actually happy about that you want to take all that out and all of this needs to be cleaned up so it should be really greasy but it could also be uh, a little bit starting to corrode already you can see the the green color that's coming off of there is actually from corrosion of the of the brass that's that starts almost immediately as soon as you get the thing in the water uh, these things eventually do need to be replaced but this one's still in okay shape for now and it doesn't really matter what it looks like on the outside of this piece because that's not rotating it's the cable that rotates inside of this so I'm going to put these aside well that one aside continue wiping this off and then you just want to clean this off uh, as best possible you can there's various things that you can do for that you can go ahead and use your WD-40 uh, as as a cleaning solution it has a lot of solvents in it a lot of uh, lightweight polycarbonate or uh, polycarbonates hydrocarbons in it that will uh, that will work well here to help clean this up at this point you can inspect this if you have a flex cable you can inspect it to see if there are any kinks in it if there are any points where it doesn't bend smoothly this is a offshoreelectrics.com upgraded cable and they're pretty strong and pretty uh, reliable looks like it's still in pretty good shape and uh, this looks like it's all good to go all right now my little bushing this guy i'm going to clean this out very thoroughly because you want this to be very clean i'm going to use electric motor spray here there's also nitro spray uh, any pure solvent uh, really thin solvent especially from an aerosol can it's going to allow you to evacuate uh, most of the grease from there so now i'm going to actually put that aside again and now this stuffing tube this brass tube that everything goes through there's actually a another tube inside of there a liner a plastic liner and that I'm actually going to push out I'm I just took the the 
tube from the WD-40 can. I took that off and I'm going to stick that down in here. It should be pretty high up and bend it through. I'm actually using this as a tool to push just along the edge of that tube. There we go. There it comes. Now I can pull that out right here. And that should be nice and greasy and it may also have some debris inside of it. So this one is actually starting to... No, it actually looks like it's still in pretty good shape. I will be replacing this pretty soon. This is a commodity item. It's designed to get worn down. Uh, helps to reduce friction, but eventually it will get worn down. Just wiped off the outside of that. And again, I'm going to use my electric motor cleaner or any sort of uh, thin spray and just spray out the inside of that and get all the old grease out. Here is a very useful tool for cleaning out tubes. It is a pipe cleaner or a piece of craft chenille and you can just stick that in there with a little bit of the solvent on it and pull that through and that will give you a nice clean inner liner. So this is now good to go. And the last thing that I'm going to do is spray some of this solvent through the stuffing tube itself just to help evacuate any last debris and uh, some of the leftover grease out from that. All right, make sure that's emptied out. And there we go. Should be in good shape now. That's, that's pretty much it for the important stuff that you really need to do. Uh, it's a good, a good idea at this point. If you have a favorite, lub favorite lubricant to re-lubricate uh, any moving parts, especially around your, your rudder. Um, you can also, for most things, you could just take and uh, loosely and put your hatch back on and just spray the entire rear end with WD-40. Uh, it does leave behind uh, some, uh, some lubricating medium uh, hydrocarbons that will just uh, help to preserve things and prevent, uh, prevent corrosion and should not damage the silicone that you have here, silicone that you have here, or any of the metal, uh, metal, wood, fiberglass, brass, or carbon fiber parts, they should all be uh, just fine with your WD-40. And that pretty much takes care of that. Uh, one other thing, I'm actually gonna just spray a little bit of WD-40 now that I think about it, through my, through my rudder here, uh, just from the top, just in case there's any crap that's stayed in there and that will flow out through the hole and it just helps to disperse any water that was kept in there. That, that pretty much does it. At this point uh, it's ready for storage. I like to leave my uh, leave my components uh, with just a little bit of grease on them uh, but I won't actually reinstall them until I'm until I'm ready to run again. Just a little bit of grease just to help lower oxidation so my flex cable here I just put a little bit on just a light coat and the uh, the bushing also uh, here I'll just put a little bit on the shaft and store it like this now when I'm ready to run again then I'll go ahead and fully uh, lube this up insert it back make sure that I get everything done well blow out uh, with air just any extra WD-40 that's in there although uh, it's not going to gel in there. It's it's too lightweight, and uh, the water would just push that out. But I like to just get it out uh, ahead of time, and just normal checkups before running again. And uh, I'll be headed back out. But this should prevent most of the damage that salt water would do. You're still going to get because of that oxidation or the the evaporation that happens very quickly. You're still going to get. Uh, some damage especially to the anodization on your motor inside of the, the water jacket so uh, no matter what running in salt water will cause harm but it shouldn't be bad harm uh, just taking the anodization off is really not going to hurt anything in there it may leave a little bit of, of residue behind if you end up changing your water jacket you may uh, scrape the the o-rings a little bit you want to change those out uh, but that's stuff that is, is very rare that, that uh, folks do that unless you're really into uh, racing, in which case you're probably not going to be running in salt water at all. 
So those, that's just the routine that I go through, and I do this every single time that I run in salt water, which is very frequently, and uh, seems to seems to cover most of the bases. I hope that's useful to you. If you have your own tips and tricks for dealing with salt water or your own routine that you go through, please be sure to post that up on the forums, and uh, I'll be talking to you again soon.